Hi, and welcome to the final lesson of this chapter. Let's discuss another common data cleaning problem, duplicate values. Duplicate values can be diagnosed when we have the same exact information repeated across multiple rows for some or all columns in our data frame. In this example data frame containing the names, address, height, and weight of individuals, the rows presented have identical values across all columns. In this one, there are duplicate values for all columns except the height column, which leads us to think it's more likely a data entry error than an actual other person. Apart from data entry and human errors alluded to in the previous slide, duplicate data can also arise because of bugs and design errors, whether in business processes or data pipelines. However, they often most arise from the necessary act of joining and consolidating data from various resources, which could retain duplicate values. Let's first see how to find duplicate values. In this example, we're working with a bigger version of the height and weight data seen earlier in the video. We can find duplicates in a data frame by using the dot duplicated method. It returns a series of Boolean values that are true for duplicate values and false for non-duplicated values. We can see exactly which rows are affected by using brackets as such. However, using dot duplicated without playing around with the arguments of the method can lead to misleading results as all of the columns are required to have duplicate values by default with all duplicate values being marked as true, except for the first occurrence. This limits our ability to properly diagnose what type of duplication we have and how to effectively treat it. To properly calibrate how we go about finding duplicates, we will use two arguments from the dot duplicated method. The subset argument lets us set a list of column names to check for duplication. For example, it allows us to find duplicates for the first and last name columns only. The keep argument lets us keep the first occurrence of a duplicate value by setting it to the string first, the last occurrence of a duplicate value by setting it to the string last, or keep all occurrences of duplicate values by setting it to false. In this example, we're checking for duplicates across the first name, last name, and address columns, and we're choosing to keep all duplicates. We see the following results. To get a better bird's eye view of the duplicates, we sort the duplicate rows using the dot sort values method, choosing first name to sort by. We find that there are four sets of duplicated rows, the first two being complete duplicates of each other across all columns, highlighted here in red. The other two being incomplete duplicates of each other, highlighted here in blue, with discrepancies across height and weight respectively. The complete duplicates can be treated easily. All what is required is to keep one of them only and discard the others. This can be done with a dot drop duplicates method, which also takes in the same subset and keep arguments as in the dot duplicated method, as well as the in place argument, which drops the duplicated values directly inside the height weight data frame. Here we are dropping complete duplicates only, so it's not necessarily nor advisable to set a subset. And since the keep argument takes in first as default, we can keep it as such. Note that we can also set it as last, but not as false as it would keep all duplicates. This leaves us with the same other two sets of duplicates discussed earlier, which are the same for first name, last name, and address, but contain discrepancies in height and weight. Apart from dropping rows with really small discrepancies, we can use a statistical measure to combine each set of duplicate values. For example, we can combine these two rows into one by computing the average mean between them or the maximum, or other statistical measures. This is highly dependent on a common sense understanding of our data and what type of data we have. We can do this easily using the group by method, which when chained with the ag method, lets you group by a set of common columns and return statistical values for specific columns when the aggregation is being performed. For example here, we created a dictionary called Summaries, which instructs group by to return the maximum of duplicated rows for the height column and the mean of duplicated rows for the weight column. We then group height weight by the column names defined earlier and chain it with the AG method, which takes in the Summaries dictionary we created. We chain this entire line with the dot reset index method so that we can have numbered indices in the final output. We can verify that there are no more duplicate values by running the duplicated method again and use brackets to output duplicate rows. Now that we have a solid grasp of duplication, let's practice.